everyone in Scarlet, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we really appreciate you coming on. For those that don't know, Scarlet has been volunteering for NAMI Piedmont Tri-County for the past um, four years. And um, she is an ETS uh, presenter, an In Your Own Voice presenter. And she also is a peer group facilitator or a co-chair of those, of those support groups. So um, she's very passionate about mental health and mental health awareness. And so we're going to speak to her today and just get some idea as to why mental health awareness and ending the stigma is important to you, Scarlett, if you just want to let us know that. Yeah. So um, I've been in the mental health system since I was six years old. Um, I've been diagnosed with several things, um, started out with ADHD, and then I later got correctly diagnosed with um, depression and PTSD and dissociative identity disorder. And since having those diagnoses, um, I've experienced a lot of stigma from friends um, and even from professionals, like health professionals. Uh, and it's just encouraged me to want to help um, bring awareness and uh, lessen the stigma surrounding these disorders and, and mental health conditions in general. So can you tell us how you've experienced that stigma? How has it affected your life? And how has it made you change the way you do things in your life? Um, for sure. So one of the major, major uh, times that I've experienced stigma is through um, people that I had considered friends who I either told them about my diagnosis and um, I've had people who didn't believe me. Um, I've had people who thought I was dangerous. I've had people ask questions about whether I was going to hurt them. Um, and it's just caused me to be a lot more at first, it caused me to be a lot more guarded. Um, and later on, it's encouraged me to actually, I guess, be more open to kind of help bring awareness. Hopefully, you know, other people won't have to experience the same kind of stigmas that I do. We, we had talked about this yesterday. Um, Maria did a video for me yesterday. And we discussed um, that people, you know, perceive us differently when we have a mental health diagnosis. It doesn't matter how successful we've become in life it always gets brought back to that mental health diagnosis. I mean, even if we think of people like Van Gogh and there's always that mental health piece that gets thrown into that uh, conversation. So um, what would you say to somebody who was struggling with their mental health, but didn't want to bring that own stigma onto themselves? What would you suggest um, would be their first step? Um, well, I think for anybody who's struggling with uh, a mental health condition, the first best step would be to um, establish some care with a professional, um, whether that be a therapist or a psychiatrist, um, somebody that actually has an understanding of your diagnosis and has dealt with people who have your diagnosis before. Um, but as far as um, friends and family, um, if, if they don't understand, I would suggest seeing if NAMI has any um, family to family programs going on or anything like that. Uh, because when I was first diagnosed, my, um, my mom and stepdad went and did one of the NAMI programs. Um, I, I believe it was family to family. Um, and they were able to learn a lot and um, be a lot more supportive and understanding of my diagnoses. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we actually have a family to family class starting um, online here in the next couple of weeks. And I have been posting that out on our social media. So I will put a note at the end of this for people to find that program as well. So along your journey, um, you said you were six. And so how did it even manifest at six? And who, who realized that there was a problem first? Um, so when I was uh, younger, I was having a lot of hyperactive symptoms, I guess. Um, I wasn't able to focus. I didn't want to sit still. I would get up and go to the corner of the room during class. Um, I wasn't able to get my work done. I was always feeling on edge and things like that. And it manifested in a way that, um, as this actually is not uncommon, um, I was dealing with PTSD symptoms, but I was diagnosed with ADHD. So I was put on ADHD medication and um, obviously that wasn't the right treatment for me, so it didn't work. But um, yeah, so my, my parents saw something was going on and brought me to a psychiatrist. And uh, from there I was diagnosed with ADHD. It's a long journey sometimes to get the right diagnosis, but kudos to your parents for recognizing the symptoms early on because quite often it's dismissed as 
uh, oh boy, or it's dismissed as just a kid, or it's dismissed as high imagination and those kind of things. And so that can get a kid really confused about what's going on with them because they don't have that frame of reference. So I'm so glad your parents sought out help quickly. Can you share with us some of your positive coping mechanisms now and how you've gotten to a place? Because I know that you're very successful with your life now. I know that you have your own YouTube channel. I know that you do a lot of volunteer work. I know that you're um, doing a lot of advocating. And I would like to know, you know, how you manage that and what positive coping strategies you've employed to get yourself to this point. Um, well, for me, when I'm having a hard time and struggling, um, one of my major things is, is getting into a story. So it could be a book, a TV show, or a movie, uh, but something that kind of distracts me and gives me something else to focus on. And also writing has been a big one for me. Um, and then I found out that when I share the things that I've written, like my poetry and things, people often relate. And so it helps other people as well. Okay. So can you tell me, was it um, difficult for you to find a therapist to recognize the symptoms of what was really going on? And what age did that happen? And how helpful was, was it when you finally got to the point where somebody understood? Um, so it, it was first identified with what was actually going on um, at 15, when I was 15 years old. And um, it did it did take a while to actually, I, I had been, I'd seen at least four or five other therapists before um, I saw the therapist that actually identified um, my DID and my PTSD. Um, and so it was, it was very helpful to finally get the correct diagnosis. Um, and I was able to get on the, get in the correct type of treatment and uh, get off the medications that weren't helping me. Um, which, which made a big difference for sure. That's awesome. So if you can tell us, because I know that you share a lot on your YouTube channel. So could you share the, do you have a channel name for that? Or is that just, can I link that? Yeah. Yeah. It's called the labyrinth system. And, um, most of the content I post on there has to do with my, um, dissociative identity disorder, but I also post about trauma disorders, um, PTSD, and I interview other people. So I've interviewed somebody with bipolar. I've interviewed somebody with agoraphobia. Um, I'm going to be interviewing somebody with the eating disorder PICA soon. Okay. So I'm, I'm excited about that because I feel like that disorder is, very, is not known about. Right. So. Very misunderstood. Can you tell us a little bit more about the DID? Can you just share um, a high level version of what um, somebody might be struggling with if they do have DID. Right. Um, so for me, um, when before I was diagnosed, uh, one of the major things that I would struggle with is I would lose time. So I would have days that I didn't remember. I would have tests I didn't remember taking. I would get them back. I would have assignments due. I didn't remember getting assigned. Um, and I would, you know, sometimes I wouldn't remember a whole day or a couple days. Um, and so that was one of the major symptoms. But also I would hear um, voices whispering. And um, I didn't know what it was. I was later to find out that it was my alters, my other personalities. But um, those were the two major things. And of course, also I had PTSD symptoms. Um, and DID and PTSD kind of go hand in hand. They're both trauma disorders. Um, so for me, those were the major things that were kind of, um, tick offs that something was going on. I gotcha. So just my final question is, um, once you, um, recognized this is what was going on and from six to 15 is a long period of time for you to struggle and try and manage those symptoms with, um, you know, things that were going on for you that weren't recognized. Um, so um, once, once you did get to that right therapist, can you tell me what the, the major treatment protocol is for? Um, is that talk therapy? Is it CBT? Is it DBT? Is it, what's the um, overriding? Um, so for DID, mostly it's talk therapy. There's no medication or anything that treats DID specifically. Um, it, it's mostly trauma therapy and working through trauma and also um, developing, developing better communication with the other alters, the other personalities, um, so that I know what happens when I'm not present and so that there's more control over who comes out and when and things like that. 
Interesting, interesting. Um, so where could somebody find more? They could go to your YouTube channel, but where, where else could they find information on um, the ideal PTSD? Where would you recommend? Um, Pods is uh, the Positive Outcome for Dissociative Survivors is a, um, a UK charity and they have a lot of good information. And then An Infinite Mind is, um, they're actually based in Orlando. And they are another charity that brings a lot of awareness towards DID. And every year they have a conference for people with dissociative identity disorder. So both of those bring a lot of awareness and have a lot of good information. Must be helpful to have that community wrap around you of people who understand. Yes, for sure. I think another uh, big thing with um, as far as getting the right treatment and healing is, is having a community um, you know, because therapists are not always going to have all the answers. So being able to talk to somebody who deals with the same disorder and see what they've done and see what has helped them in certain situations has definitely helped a lot. Perfect. That's, that's, that's great advice. Thank you so much. Um, well, I will let you go. Thank you so much for talking to me today. I'm going to link your YouTube at the end of this video, and I'm going to have some other resources that you've mentioned just to make sure that people can find those resources. Um, and so thank you so much for coming on today. We super appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.